Hi. In a previous video, I showed you this 3D clock with a nice smoothly moving second hand, minute hand, an hour hand, and this sub-second rotating marker. And I'll turn the sound on. Um, and I showed a little bit of the code, not too much. And now what I want to do is walk you through simpler versions of this starting with this version here, which just has black hands, all the same thickness. And then to this version, which has uh, different thicknesses for the hands, and then the second hand moves smoothly. And then to this one where we have tick marks on the outside. And finally to this one where we have color and you can rotate with the mouse. Let's start with this W version. We have W, X, Y, and Z. Here's the code. You see my comment, a very basic clock with only hands and no color. This is all a code for it. The setup function creates the canvas and the draw function draws three hands. There's a draw hand function and we call it with um, the hour turned into a 12 hour time and the minute and the second. And then these numbers here say that there are um, how many um, units, so there are 12 hours on the face of the clock, there are 60 minutes and 60 seconds on the face of the clock, and then width divided by 6 um, is used to set the length of these hands. Uh, let's see how the draw hand function works. Push and pop, save and restore the state of the transformations. Fill zero makes them black, and rotate Z finds the, uh, first we find the angle to rotate by, by using the um, kind of like how far away around are we? The position divided by the maximum units. So if you have, uh, if we're doing seconds and you're halfway there, the position would be 30, the units would be 60. So that's one half times two pi which when you're using radians is halfway around the circle. And we rotate in a negative direction because rotate Z goes counterclockwise and we want to rotate clockwise. Why do we need to do the translate? I'll show you. If we don't do that translation for half the width of the, of the uh, hand, then it rotates about the center of the hand. So this translation moves the hand half of its length so that we can rotate about one end of the hand, like this. Okay, and then we draw the cylinder. They're all, they all have a um, radius, these cylinders, of five, and the length is different. Okay, that's the W version. Let's look at the X version now, which adds the smoothly moving hand. Here is the code for the X version. There's a little bit more code. I'll show you a diff of the code so you can see what's new. Well, we added a radius argument to the draw hand function so that each hand can have a different radius. We also added a Z value because uh, although you can't see it yet, the hands are in different positions on the Z axis. So some, the second hand is closer to us than the hour hand. And how do we use that? Well, Z is used with the translate and the radius is used instead of the constant five Um, now, what are we doing differently here? The, in order to make the second hand and all the hands actually move smoothly, we can't just deal with these integer hour, minute, second values. We've got to deal with the fractional portions of the second. So, um, do I still have this spreadsheet here? Yeah. In this spreadsheet, I show 
what these values are. And let me just get out of the diff and look at it here. Okay, I ran the program and captured this output. So you see there are four columns here and they correspond to these four variables. And milliseconds after current seconds, um, so let's say the time now is 15, 22, 23, and some fraction. So could perhaps it's 77 milliseconds after the last whole second. Um, and when I ran this, it was 49 seconds after the minute, and now we have this fractional part. So that's the second plus fraction is this column. Um, and then minute plus fraction. So if you figure 49 um, out of 60 is about 81%. I'll show you here. Uh, so 49 divided by 60 is, a, is about 0.81. So 5 minutes plus 0.81 and something. So that's the minute plus the fraction. And then we need the hour plus the fraction. And um, when I ran this, the hour was zero. And um, so let's see, 5.81 divided by 60. Let's see if that jibes. Yes, so 0 0.968, 0 0.97. So that's the hour plus the fraction. Um, so instead of using these uh, previous the previous integer values we use these real numbers to get uh, smoother movement okay so there you see that smooth movement let's go now to the Y version where we add the tick marks here's the code for the Y version and I'll diff this against the X version And um, we have quite a few things, tick marks, an axle, and a state object. We have a new function to draw tick marks. We have a function to draw the axle. And we call them here. What else is new here? This state object stores um, kind of adjustable options for these things. The, um, well, here, let me come over here and... Uh, show you the hour these are hour marks these are minute marks and the 10 the radius of these cylinders here is 10 and 5 and the height of all of these is 10 so if we were to rotate this we would see that they have an extent on the z-axis of 10 the axle here has a Thickness of 10, that's the radius, and then a length of 200. And you can't see it yet because we can't rotate it. Okay, let's see what we want to talk about here with drawing the tick marks. There are 60 tick marks. And we use the tick index, which goes from 0 to 59, to find our way around the circle. And then we translate, we move ourselves out to the radius. And then we tilt so that we align these things on the z-axis. I'll just show you what it would look like if we didn't do this part. See, all those things are no longer aligned with the z-axis. They're just going uh, up and down and the rotation. Okay, that's fixed. And then um, the mark thickness. We figure out whether this is um, one of the hour tick marks or one of the minute tick marks. And we um, set the value appropriately. And then here's where we call cylinder to make these cylinders with the thickness we calculated and then with the mark height that came from the state. Drawing the axle is pretty simple. We rotate on X again to align the cylinder with the Z axis. 
and then we draw the cylinder at the fixed thickness and length. Okay, I think that was the big changes for the Y version. And now the Z version adds color and then the ability to rotate. So now you can see these things that are on the Z axis a little bit better. You can see that the hands are not on the same place on the Z axis. Okay, so let's look at the Z code here. And I'll diff against the previous. Okay, what have we got? Well, we've added mouse has moved to the state. Um, I'll show you what that does. You see that when I move the mouse around, this image moves. But what I want to avoid is when the when the sketch first runs, I want to avoid having, I want the clock to present itself aiming directly at us. I don't want the fact that the mouse pointer is now up in the corner to make it originally appear like this. So that's why I won't rotate it until the mouse has first been moved. And that's what this does. And now I've found some colors for the hands and the ticks. Now you'll see where I replace fill zero with fill the ticks colors. And I added a nice comment to explain the draw hand function. We added the color argument to the draw hand function. And now we also have rotate clock with mouse. And then here, when the mouse move function is called, that's when I set the, the mouse has move flag to true. Okay, uh, we added colors here. And um, I'll explain the rotate clock with mouse, but I'll get out of the diff and back to here. Rotate clock with mouse. Rotates using the mouse X position rotates on the y-axis, and using the mouse's y-position, rotates on the x-axis. And this function, angle from mouse, maps the mouse position, um, which goes from 0 to width minus 1. The width and height are fixed to be the same. So it maps from 0 to width minus 1 to the um, negative of the maximum rotation radians. Where's this max rotation radians coming from? That's coming from here. So we've said pi divided by 4. 2 pi is a complete circle, so pi divided by 4 is an eighth of a circle. So this is, should be rotating it by one eighth of a circle, either direction. And uh, just before we stop, we'll look back at the complete version. Again, to remind you of that, it turns on its own, and then there's that second hand thing, or the subsecond hand, if you like, that's going around, and the sound. Okay, I hope, I hope this walkthrough, starting from these very simple examples and building on them, help you understand the code in the full 3D clock program.